Hey guys, Johnny from Ignite here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Metropolis, the film by Fritz Lang. And we are going to be looking specifically at the contextual influences that helped shape Lang's depiction in Metropolis. But before I get into that, if you haven't checked out our HSE English resource platform, where we provide resources on texts like Metropolis and everything else for the new English syllabus, check out ignitehse.com.au. I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised with what we have on offer on there. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Enjoy. Okay, so when we're looking at the context of Fritz Lang's film Metropolis, it's very important to keep in mind the general timeline within which we are working. So when we're talking about the timeline of the film Metropolis, it was released in the year 1927. Right now we're in 2020. This is a long time ago indeed. It's before the Second World War occurred, which was between 1939 and 1945. So do not be citing anything about the Second World War in an essay on this text. You would only want to be talking about the First World War, which was between 1914 and 1918. And then the interwar period, or at least part thereof, because the interwar period continued all the way up until 1939. Interwar meaning between the two wars. And we're in that interwar period, and that is a period in which the Weimar Republic emerged. It actually emerged at the end of World War I. And this is of course occurring within Germany. So this is a German expressionist film. Fritz Lang was German. And the Weimar Republic is this kind of democracy. They had a constitution that emerged after World War I. And it's this reconfiguration of German society that's going on. And we'll see lots of competing forces and tensions that were occurring at the time of this new Weimar Republic for Germany. Uh, but most importantly, I should say, World War I, Germany was defeated in this war. They did not win. That meant there were significant economic and social consequences for that, such as paying reparations to the countries by which they were defeated. They had to pay back all the damage that they caused, and they lost a whole lot of land as well. So huge consequences for losing that war for Germany. Uh, they go into huge debt. They suffer with lots of inflation later on. They have to try and rebuild their economy like the rest of Europe, who are all economically devastated by a war, as you would imagine a war would do. It would just use up all of your resources and really destroy people psychologically as well. So don't just think about the physical and economic side of it, but also the psychological, right? This is a defeated German psyche that Fritz Lang is going to project onto the film that is Metropolis. We also have the rise of fascism, which really is a type of totalitarian ideology. And totalitarianism is indeed very dangerous, as this is to do with a level on the political spectrum where the person at the top has complete control. People in these societies do not have any power. Everything is decided at the top, and that people in a totalitarian society are made to think and feel whatever way the dictator or the totalitarian leader wants them to feel. So we know that Hitler was really the culmination of fascism, which occurred in the Second World War, but Hitler's rise to power actually started in 1933, but he was becoming a prominent figure even at the time that Metropolis was released. So Hitler's around and he's starting to gather together some support because people are disillusioned by the, the standard German political structures that have been in place since World War I because of how poorly things are going in German society. So people are starting to get around ideas that are being propagated that are to do with fascism and totalitarianism and significant political upheaval. Okay, so let's get a bit more specific here. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of the general atmosphere in Germany post-World War I, which Fritz Lang is really going to draw upon in the film. So we're in Weimar, Germany. Uh, Weimar is based on the actual place, the location where the new German constitution was made, where this democracy was going to emerge after World War I, because obviously everything had to change after Germany lost the war. And in this post-World War I period, we're dealing with one of the most turbulent periods in Germany's history, right? Keyword here, turbulent. People don't know how to feel. They don't know what to think. They're so conflicted. We've just seen the destruction of so many people 
And yet, in 1927, we're starting to see some semblance of recovery, of hope for a better future come out of industrialization and capitalism. So there are some positive forces at play by 1927. Remember, the film wasn't made straight after World War I. There was actually a nine, ten year gap before it was released. And when Fritz Lang probably started thinking about the film, 1924, 1925, because it takes a couple of years to make a film, uh, especially of this kind, this is one of the most expensive films produced in history. Given that lapse in time since the actual conclusion of the war, things have changed a little bit more than a year or two after the war, where it's probably just a defeatist attitude that would be encapsulated. Now people are starting to think a little bit more optimistically by this point. So keep in mind there the tension there. People are still devastated, but they're a little bit more hopeful. Okay, so we have the defeat, we've explained that, but when World War I ended, we had the Treaty of Versailles. You might have heard of this before, especially if you study history or just general knowledge. Germany was humiliated. They had lost the war, they had to concede to that loss, and they have to pay reparations and also give up land. So they have to go and actually pay back all the countries who they've damaged throughout the war because they were the losers in that war. Okay, then we have bankruptcy and the Dawes plan. So this is a little bit later, that's right after World War I. So we're looking at 1918, 1919, when this is coming around, the end of the war. And then when we get to the Dawes plan, because Germany was so bankrupt, because they had to pay all these reparations, the only way they could finance it is by taking huge loans. So they actually go to America, they go to the US, 1924, and they borrow a whole lot of money, huge amount of money to pay back everyone. So they're in massive amounts of debt, but at least they have money. They can get the economy back on track, right? So we actually get hyperinflation happening in the early 1920s, which means all of the German people's money was losing value. Their currency was not worth anything, even in their own country. You could go and try and buy a loaf of bread with your, let's say $5 or whatever the equivalent is. And if you have that $5, the next day, it's not gonna buy you that bread. You need $20. So inflation is occurring at a rapid rate, which means everyone's losing their money, which means if no one's money's worth anything, everyone's standard of living is going down, right? So we have hyperinflation, then we have the doors plan. So really you could put these in the opposite order. They borrow this money, they try and get the economy back on track. And actually, from 1924 going forward a little bit, and even around that period itself, the economy is starting to restabilize after the war anyway. So we've got the early 1920s, but then we have some semblance of recovery occurring, especially after this loan is taken out to kind of get Germany back on track, stabilize the currency. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.